Beard thought that the great strength of American civilization lay in its capacity to produce individuals with the perceptiveness and the courage to criticize the status quo. He thought that uh, all establishments were corrupt for a reason put forward by the great historian Lord Acton. Uh, power tends to corrupt. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. So for countries, peoples, civilizations to endure, to survive, it's essential that, that critics show up to test the assumptions of the policies that these entities employ. Um, Beard's greatest heroes came from the ranks of these critical thinkers and activists. I've already talked um, a little bit about uh, some of his intellectual heroes, and I'd, I'd like to focus now on some of his political heroes, beginning with George Washington. He had great admiration for Washington, uh, particularly for the farewell address, uh, uh, which Beard thought was the most profound statement ever issued about American foreign policy. And some of the points in the farewell address that Beard especially admired uh, concerned first Washington's insistence that Americans should learn to mind their own business, to focus on what the president called the inculcation of Republican virtue in the American people. Uh, that, that would be a daunting task, and we should focus on that. Uh, Beard also admired uh, a, a, another point in the president's farewell address concerning the danger of large military establishments. Washington thought that uh, it wasn't just the militarism of foreign countries that was dangerous. Militarism anywhere is dangerous and always poses a threat to Republican liberty. Beard agreed with that. Uh, Beard also uh, admired the president's insistence that we should have no entangling alliances. Uh, we should have friendly relations with all countries, the president counseled, demonizing none and forming special relationships with none. Uh, when you reflect on these points of the farewell address, it's easy to see why uh, contemporary American presidents never refer to the farewell address. It's a subversive document. It is subversive of the policies, the foreign policies we actually employ. And uh, Beard uh, reminded Americans of this point and encouraged them to go back and study the president's farewell address for a sound primer on what a, uh, a, a valid and constructive foreign policy for the American people would be. A second hero, much admired by Beard, was our sixth president, John Quincy Adams. Uh, Adams worried about the problem of American oligarchy. He feared that uh, the United States ran the risk of developing a society that despite the, 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 what we call ourselves a, a, a republic, uh, it would really be a, an oligarchy. And he developed what he called this American system idea. And the chief principle of that system was as follows. Uh, Adams said that the chief object of civil government should be the improvement of the parties of the social compact. The chief object of civil government should not be the protection of the money bags of the rich, which is what Adams thought was the system we were developing in this country. And, and Beard agreed with that and counseled his readers in book after book to go back to John Quincy Adams' American system idea for instruction on how to reform the polity of the United States. 
Uh, Adams thought that the, the, the wonderful patrimony of the United States, the, the great resources of the United States, should be used to develop uh, the, the, the American people to, to, to benefit them. And he, he developed ideas about how education should be uh, funded by uh, the, the national patrimony, uh, infrastructure reforms, and Beard was partial to all of that program that uh, President John Quincy Adams advanced in the American system. A third figure, uh, much praised by Beard, was our 31st president, Herbert Hoover. This is an ironic friendship that Beard developed rather late in his life. It's ironic because um, Hoover was a, a conservative Republican, a firm believer in the free market capitalist system. Uh, Beard, on the other hand, was a progressive liberal and, and, and to the left of the New Deal in his economic ideas about what the American people should be doing to, uh, uh, to, to distribute uh, uh, wealth among the people. Um, in fact, Beard did vote for FDR in 1932 against Hoover, and they were political opponents through much of the decade of the 1930s. But toward the end of that decade, Beard began to develop an appreciation for Hoover's foreign policy ideas, and particularly the fact that Hoover subscribed to the Farewell Address. He, he thought that Americans should mind their own business, that uh, Hoover also sought to uh, limit the growth of the military budget in the United States in those years. He, he sought to uh, promote um, uh, peaceful relations with the Japanese in the Pacific. He was very mindful of the dangers out there in the Pacific that could explode in war. And, and held in check his uh, very adventurous Secretary of State, Henry Stimson. Um, Beard admired all that. He, 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 and he, he singled out Hoover as um, probably the last great president America would have. And, and he, he based that judgment at the, toward the end of his life after World War II. Beard died in 1948. But he based that judgment on what he considered to be the, the existential crisis of the United States, the greatest threat to American civilization and to the American people, he thought was the American empire. And, and uh, Hoover was an anti-imperialist. He was an anti-militarist. He was the last American president who was an anti-imperialist and an anti-militarist. And Beard revered him for that. Uh, I, I would say uh, many of his political heroes threw out the annals of, uh, of uh, the American Republic really belonged to that category of uh, admirers, of defenders of George Washington's farewell address principles. And Hoover was the last great American president to be in that category.